Step 5. Repeater generations. So we have seen what the types of errors are that occur in quantum networks, and we have seen how to characterize an unknown state, but we still have not discussed how to deal with these errors. That's what we're going to do in this step. So how do we deal with loss errors? One way of uh, dealing with loss errors is via heralding. So we call this heralded generation. And how it works is basically you have to send an acknowledgement a message back um, to the sender that you have received the photon or re received the package. So let's say that we've got repeater A that's trying to send a photon to repeater B. Repeater A tries the first time, but the photon does not arrive. So then repeater B says, no, I did not get anything. So repeater A has to try again. Repeater A tries, and again, it, uh, the photon gets absorbed or doesn't get collected, or even doesn't get detected. So repeater B says, no, it looks like I didn't get anything. So repeater A has to try again until finally he succeeds, and then repeater, a, a repeater B acknowledges, yes, I got it. So the, the advantage of uh, heralded generation of entanglement is that both A and B know for sure when they are sharing an entangled state. The disadvantages are the following. The scheme is probabilistic. As we have seen, most of the time actually it fails. But when it succeeds, both A and B know this. But this heralding requires two-way communication. Repeater A first sends the quantum message to B, but then B has to send a classical message acknowledging that the scheme worked. And this can lead to a lot of waiting time uh, um, once repeater B receives the information. And any waiting time is very bad in quantum networks. Imagine that you're trying to share entangled states between A and B. So while the repeater B is sending the acknowledgement message back to A, your quantum state is decohering in the quantum memories. Another way to deal with loss errors is via error correction. So this is a more complicated scheme, and it works in the following way. So this time repeater A has more resources. It's got the original quantum message, the original qubit, and a bunch of other qubits. And it uses these qubits to encode, uh, encode the uh, state of the system into multi-qubit state. And then it sends all of these physical qubits to repeater B. And the quantum error correction code in, is designed in such a way that even if some of the physical qubits get lost along the way, re repeater B is still able to decode uh, the state, the received state on its side, and recover the original message. The advantage of this approach is that it is deterministic and it does not require one uh, uh, two-way classical communication. The communication only goes from A to B. So once B recovers the sent message, once it is decoded, it can proceed immediately with processing it. How do we deal with operational errors? The first uh, approach is via heralded purification. How this works, A and B um, distribute or share uh, at least two copies of a bell pair. And each bell pair has its own fidelity, F1 and F2. And then they apply local um, operations on their uh, qubits. A applies operations on its side, on the qubits that it is storing, and so does B. And the result of that is a single bell pair shared between repeater A and repeater B with fidelity higher than F1 or F2. So it gets around um, the issue of operational errors, but at a cost. Again, this whole process is probabilistic and requires two-way classical communication. Repeater A has to send results of its operations to repeater B, and repeater B has to send results of its operations back to repeater A before they can proceed. A different way of uh, taking care of operational errors is again via using quantum error correction. And this is very similar to, uh, to the scheme of dealing with loss errors. Again, repeater A has more quantum resources, it has multiple qu qubits, which it encodes into a multi-qubit um, entangled uh, quantum state, which is then sent to uh, repeater B. Repeater B recovers these qubits, decodes them, and recovers the original uh, message. 
And again, the advantage of this scheme is that it is deterministic and therefore does not require one-way classical communication. So depending on which scheme for dealing with loss errors and operational errors you implement, uh, this leads to three generations of quantum repeaters summarized in the following table. So here at the top we've got uh, loss errors and how to deal with them, either via heralded generation or quantum error correction. And here in this green we've got operational errors and again we can deal with them uh, via heralded purification or quantum error correction. So if your repeater uh, network uses heralded generation for uh, dealing with loss errors and heralded purification for dealing with operational errors, it's called first-generation quantum repeater network, or 1G. If your network uses heralded generation for loss errors, but quantum error correction for operational errors, then these networks are known as second-generation, or 2G networks. And finally, if you deal with loss errors and operational errors using quantum uh, error correction, then this is known as 3G. So this concludes our brief overview of dealing with uh, uh, loss errors and operational errors. In the next lesson, we're going to dive deeper into the first generation quantum networks. See you there.